Certainly. Definitely appreciate everyone joining us today. Uh, like Ronald said, my name is Robbie Morris with Kiosera Document Solutions. I've uh, been with Kiosera now, coming up on six years, actually. August, it's August 20th, it'll be six years that I've been with Kiosera. Uh, prior to that, I worked for a software company for about eight years. So a lot of my mindset revolves around those types of environments, software, applications, business processes, how things operate, why you do things the way you do. Maybe we can do it better. Uh, so just want to speak very quickly about Kiosera at a high level. We focus on three core areas. Hardware, obviously we are a hardware manufacturer. Software and services. So out of the about 230 companies that are under our umbrella now, I work in the Document Solutions Division. Like I said, that's hardware, software, and solutions. So what I focus on is the software and the services aspect of the business. So I'm going to go through a few of these, and then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you how, from our position, we address some of these different challenges that we've gone through. That sound good? Like I said, only about 52 slides. <laughs> do you make these available? I mean, can I? Certainly. Yeah, if you'll give me your card okay. when we're done today, I'll be happy to send it over to you. They're also recording this session today, too, so I imagine there'll be a video available. So mm -hmm. speak up, the microphone will hear you, and we'll get any of these questions answered. <clears throat> One of the first things I look at when I go into organization is letterhead, or forms, documents that you may outsource. Is anyone doing that right now? Mm -hmm. Right? From a print shop, probably? All right? When you order those from the print shop, do you generally order a, a hundred at a time or 500 at a time? Generally a thousand, right? Or more than that. Yeah? Why do you do it that way? Less expensive. Less expensive. It's cheaper, right? Uh, well, what happens if maybe you decide to move down the road to a new location? Yeah. Or perhaps the church, maybe you bring on another staff member and you want to add their information to the letterhead. That's a difficult process when you've got 5,000 sheets already printed, right? Mm. Now you've got a lot of scratch paper. <laughs> That's the way I look at that. Sure. So you go and reorder and now, okay, we're going to throw this in the recycling bin and that's a loss for us. One of the easiest things we do is what I call on-demand letterhead generation. So think about your template, right? your pre-printed document. You'll normally run over here, you know, you stick it in the bypass tray of the machine, and yell across the office, no one else print, I got letterhead in the machine, right? <laughs> exactly. You all know about that. I see everyone's experienced that probably at one point or another. So rather than having to go through that process, we can actually store your letterhead digitally. So when you want to print on letterhead, you have a print driver called letterhead. So it doesn't matter where you're printing from. Some people will say, well, I have a Microsoft Word and I've got my template in Microsoft Word. Well, that's great if you're printing from Microsoft Word. But what if you want to print a PDF that someone sent you and you want it on your letterhead? Or if you're in Excel or if you're in a photo application, what do you do, right? So that's where the letterhead print option comes in. No matter where you print from, as long as you say letterhead, It'll apply your letterhead to whatever you're sending to the document. And I'm going to show you that. Everything we're going to talk about today, I'm going to show you as we go along. What about scanning documents? Do you scan documents now? Yeah? Is anyone still keeping the paper file cabinet, right? The real piece of paper in the physical file cabinet? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Is it a matter of convenience or just haven't moved into that direction yet of electronic storage? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That, that's a common answer. Uh, the one I see a lot is we want to store this digitally. If we want to store it electronically, we're not sure the best way to do it or it's not efficient. And then sometimes it's, that's my security. I know if I've got that physical piece of paper that I can go pick up that it still exists, right? You still got to get moving along a little in that, uh, a little in the methodology there. So, when you're storing your documents now, do you have a process that you go through? What I call a workflow. So you think about a typical one we see is someone comes up, they put a document here in the machine, and then they'll either scan it to their email address or they scan it to their scans folder on their desktop, right? Well, what do you do next? 
Well, you go back to your computer, right? Probably open up Outlook or open up that folder. And then, how's that document generally appear when it comes in there? It's going to say DOC and a whole bunch of numbers, right? That timestamp. You have no idea. You've got 30 of those in there. Which document's which? So then you rename the document. You have to sit there, right click, rename, type that out. And then ultimately where you want to store it, you probably move it to another folder location. Maybe you've got a client's folder or a project's folder that you're storing those documents in. Maybe you have uh, what I call the shared drive. You know, they'll say, our, our, e our IT guy told me to put it in this folder because that's what's backed up, not my computer. So you've got to cut, paste, move. Those are the different steps that we look at where there's multiple steps involved. It may be complex. It's difficult for users to follow. Do they have a consistent way that no matter who does it, if any of us in this room walked up and did the process, do we have a predictable outcome? Or is it one of those where, well, Susie handles that, but she's on vacation, so it's all going to sit on her desk until she comes back. And the whole time Susie's on vacation, she's thinking about, oh, when I come back, I come back off. <laughs> right. We don't want to do that to Susie. We want everyone to be able to help her out so that we know what the process is. We have a predictable outcome when we do that. So I'm going to show you some ways that we've streamlined workflows for individuals. Definitely comparing that to the standard scan to folder, scan to email, and then modify it. There you go, Doug. Very well timed. <laughs> Very good, sir. What about faxing? Anybody still fax? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. All right. Do you have the standalone fax machine or do you have the phone line connected to your current device? No, I use another little device. Another little device, right? Yep. So something else that has to be plugged in, something else that needs a phone line attached to it, right? Are you sending large documents or is it just kind of one off, two or three? I have no idea. No idea. Okay. Things we look at with that is when you're sending large documents, maybe you want to send 50 or 100 pages, those fax machines take a while to do that. We've probably all experienced that at one point or another. Or when you're receiving it, you know, a load of sound coming in there. Then eventually it'll print one page and then you stand there, wait, wait, okay, here's the next page. So there's ways to do that more efficiently now. Uh, I like to call it the two P's. One is the provider. That phone line, you're not actually paying for that phone number. You're paying the phone company to provide you that service on that number. That number can go anywhere. You ever change cell phone providers? You can transfer your phone number from provider to provider. Same thing with a landline type phone. You can move that number from provider to provider. So we like to look at how much you're paying that current provider. Most organizations I've dealt with, I've seen an average of $45 to $60 a month per month that they're paying to the phone company to provide them that service. Then on top of that, you have to have the fax machine or you have to buy a fax capable unit. So maybe we can change that to a digital provider. So we actually don't use the phone line. We don't use that fax modem. So your operating expense month to month where you're paying that $45 to $60, look at eliminating that or reducing it significantly because digital providers don't have that physical infrastructure, those landlines that have to be maintained like the telephone companies do as the provider. The other P in that is the process though. When you think about that, well, how am I going to fax without a phone line? That's usually where people start going, wait a minute, something's not right here. I've got to have a phone line to fax. Not really. The process doesn't have to change. We design solutions so that you still walk up to a device and all you do is type a phone number. We just change the process in the background of how it transmits it. But for an end user perspective, they still walk up and type a phone number. When a fax is received, it still prints out at the device even though there's no phone line or modem attached to it and, in the meantime, reduce those operating expenses. <laughs> Quizzing and testing. Uh, one of the things we talked about was uh, some education. And even in the church, you probably do some type of quizzing testing where you want to get some feedback, maybe have a day school or something like that. Uh, even in professional organizations, think about continuing education, right? 
we want to make sure our workers are certified on this latest compliance or this checklist or even just company policies. Well, it's very hard to present that information, have them fill out a test, and then get those results. Uh, if anyone's been to a school, remember the old, what I call the Scantron form, the bubble sheet form, right? That company did something really smart. They did the same thing that the razor blade companies did. What a razor blade company do? I'll give you the razor, and Just what do you buy? buy? <laughs> you buy the blades. That company did the same thing where they would give you the device. You just had to buy the pieces of paper to run through it. They were charging schools anywhere between a nickel to eight cent per page to do those. You multiply that by a couple hundred students, a couple thousand students, 50, 60 teachers wanting to give tests, that's a lot of money just buying pieces of paper to run through a machine that they gave to you. There's a reason they gave it to you. They want you to buy those. So we actually looked at that problem and said, okay, how can we help people with this? How can we you make this better? So we actually have a piece of software that'll generate the test on just regular eight and a half by 11 paper that you already own. And then you grade it off of that. And that's actually what we're gonna to do today. I made up a little quiz for us. So everyone will get to participate and see how that works. The last thing I wanna to present to you is just a matter of accessibility. You were saying earlier that your printer wasn't working. You were no. having a, it was just driving you up the wall, right? It is, yes. Yeah. So, is there another one in your office that's easily accessible to you? No, that no. is the only one. That's the only office. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we definitely got to talk to you then. We got to take yes. care of that. <laughs> well, we look at this from a, a mobile workforce perspective. Everybody's got their smartphones now, right? Well, if I wanted to maybe take a picture and print that on my device, what are the steps involved in doing that? Well, I may have to download that picture to my computer or I may email it to myself, then go to my computer and open it up and print it that way. What if you just had an app on your phone where you could print directly from your phone to the device? Or Google, anybody use Google? <laughs> All right, that's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> Everybody in this room probably used Google 10 times a day already, whether you knew it or not. <laughs> Being able to print directly from Google services directly to the machines. So enabling accessibility in more than one way than just I have to be in front of my computer or I have to be in front of my laptop. How can we make the device more accessible to the wireless, to the mobile workforce? So the way we do all this is through what we call business applications. The best way I make this comparison is I go back to the cell phone. What do you like about your cell phone? Convenience. Convenience. Ease of use. Ease of use. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. What, what encompasses everything? What do you do with your phone? Let me ask you that. I uh, read emails. I surf the net. I watch TV shows. I uh, stream movies. I uh, everything. Anybody notice the one thing she didn't say? Uses telephones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tall. Occasionally. Right. Occasionally. Occasionally. Not very often. Right? Yeah, it makes phone calls, but nobody ever says, I love my cell phone because it makes these super awesome phone calls. No, I can, I can FaceTime with my family and friends. I can check Twitter. I can look at my stock app. I can check the weather, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same concept that we've incorporated. So, I mean, obviously, I'm quite biased in this situation, being that I work for Kyocera. But when you look out in this room, SVOE not only represents Kyocera, they have Canon, they have Xerox, they have UHP devices, right? In this industry that we're in, all of those devices, myself, the others, they all put toner on paper well. Everybody's figured that part of it out. There's really no difference. They're a commodity at that level. So we look to see how do we help? How do we make things different? And again, I use the phone as the example. We do the same thing, just like you were talking about. I use it for everything. We come up with business applications, software that goes on to devices, and we figure out how to solve those business challenges that we just spoke about using those applications. So it brings more value for you. It makes the equipment more useful in your environment versus something that just puts toner down on paper. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Guess what? We're done with the presentation. <laughs>